The next topic of discussion is getting audio connected from the FT817 to the laptop with FL Digi. You find this is actually surprisingly easy, a lot simpler than most people think. There is, again, some equipment that's needed to do this, and it's a little subjective. I, I, the way that it was configured earlier, uh, we used a uh, software push to talk, and I spoke earlier about keeping everything uh, as simple as possible. And because we're using RigCat for push to talk, uh, in looking at this first cable, you can see there's a, a USB connector here and, and a box. And this box also has an LED. I've shown this box in other videos. What this is, is basically there's a hardware push to talk built in. It's a USB to serial device with a hardware push to talk and the uh, audio in and out signals combined. And I have a lot of uses for stuff like this uh, with devices. It's, it's a two in one package. But because we have the software push to talk, this is not needed. A much more simpler approach for the configuration that we've put together is a cable like this. This uses the same interface that plugs into the uh, data connection in the back of the FT817. And all that it provides is the audio in and out, nothing more. There's no USB cables to plug in. There's no uh, push to talk configurations to configure uh, beyond what was already configured previously. And again, it, it, this is an approach that can be done. You can use hardware push to talk configurations in FL Digi. It's just not required. If you do have a cable like this and you don't want to configure uh, hardware push to talk, you can still use this cable. You just don't need to plug in the uh, USB cable, leave it hanging, use these two cables, and then configure the uh, software push to talk as previously mentioned in the other video. You can see on the back of the unit is the data jack, and that's the jack that we're going to be using to connect this cable to. The other side of the cable is going to connect to the laptop or computer. Most of them have a microphone and a headphone jack. If they're not labeled like mine are, you got a 50-50 shot of getting it in correctly. You're going to find out during troubleshooting if it's in backwards or not. At this point, I've FL Digi started. Go to configure. The sound card. And I'm going to switch it over to port audio. And right here we can already see that the, um, the sound is coming through. Now mind you, I could turn up the volume on the radio. I'm going to do that now. I'm making that volume louder. It is not affecting the output on the display. And that's because the volume that's coming out of the speaker is not the volume or the signal level that's coming out the rear of the unit. You can see that I'm, that I'm changing that. If you want to see if there's an actual effect going on here, we could just hit the band button. I'm going to do that now, switch it to something like FM, which would produce an entirely different type of static. I'll do that now. And we can see that uh, FM has definitely produced a much louder, harsher static. It was displayed on the waterfall should be pointed out that the microphone volume or the volume coming from the radio can still be set up by the input volume as demonstrated here. I'll turn it up a bit and we can see uh, that the waterfall is responding accordingly to that. Right? Obviously this is completely overdriven, but just for an example, I'll turn that back down to the correct position. Pressing the transmit button will make the radio go quiet into transmit mode we can see transmit going through on the screen. Uh, you can't hear anything, obviously, because the headphones in the jack, the output's going directly into the radio. I've stopped the transmit now, we can hear the radio again. There is a very complicated and convoluted ability to monitor the output to another output. In the case of my Bluetooth uh, Philips radio, I could accomplish this task through Pulse Audio. Really what you could do is what I'm displaying here, you could get one of those two-in-one headphone adapters and just channel the output, some of it going to the radio and some of it going to the, um, in this case, I also have an option for regular headphone jack and just monitor it that way and not have to go through all of the configurations required to do this. That's a lot simpler and very possible. So this would just plug in with this cable and both of them would just plug into the output jack and be done with it. And I've set up that scenario. We have the uh, first cable, the microphone cable is just plugged directly in and the output going out from the computer 
is plugged into this cable. This is one going to the radio, uh, as before. This was previously plugged in here. And then it's also splitting off to this wire. And this wire is wrapping around back and going to the speaker, which I could control the volume independently here, so that when I transmit out of FL Digi and to the radio, I'll be able to hear what I'm transmitting. A lot of times, obviously, there is value in hearing uh, the transmitted signal, the digital signal, and this way we're allowed to do that. So now that we have everything set up, we're going to try it out now. So we're going to go to the uh, transmit receive button over here and we're going to press it. And we were able to hear the sound from the transmit coming out of the speaker which was plugged into the Y cable over here as it also transmitted to the radio at the same time. And we were able to see the visual representation on the screen. So everything's working just fine. So that's all it takes to get the FT817 running on FL Digi. We spoke about the setting up the rig cat and the connections that were required to do that through the uh, serial to USB connector, uh, the sound card related information, these cables, the Y cable for the external monitoring and the simple speaker went through the configurations within FL Digi and some permissions within Linux. It's really that easy. This is KJ4TLB with a shout out to the 147, 120 in Longwood. Thanks for watching.